I'm going to start out with a little bit of an update on what's happening here. Currently, we are in our home in Montana. We moved in about three days ago. It's still quite a bit of a mess, but uh, Coco is not sure what to make of all this. The shop is empty. We're gone. New owners are in the home and my shop. Anyway, uh, we'll kind of let you know what's going on here. Here comes my wife. Goodbye. Let's Goodbye. hear what she has to say. Off to Billings, a new adventure. A louder. Goodbye, back to Billings, off to Billings, and a new adventure. Well, welcome to my shop one last time. And I'm going to do another notes from the Wyoming wood turner in the last notes from the Wyoming wood turner from my shop in Wyoming. It's June and tomorrow we're loading up a big U-Haul truck that's sitting outside and Coco's a little bit freaked out. She's not quite sure what to make of all this. The shop is pretty empty and maybe you're getting a little bit of uh, organic echo in here. Plus, it's raining on my tin roof. So we'll just uh, forge ahead. And I am gonna make some comments and answer some questions I've gotten over the last couple videos. This is very difficult for me, leaving my shop. We'll be in Billings, Montana. Uh, in about three days, we're gonna move into a new house and uh, it's going to be really cool. I've got to build a shop and you can certainly look forward to some uh, videos on that. It's just a vacant field right now, but I'm going to make, uh, not me, uh, the, the builder will put up a 40 by 40 shop. Anyway, that'll be fun. And it's always a challenge and it's always fun to put a new shop together. And I've learned a lot from from this one, I've made some mistakes, I've done some things good, and that may be helpful to a lot of you out there who are, you know, building a new shop. Anyway, let's uh, forge ahead here. John Wallace says, welcome back, Sam. The results of this turning is amazing. It's also great to use small pieces of wood. Um, he's commenting on my lidded container that had a layer of uh, veneer in it. He said, Sam, would you do a video using a cross grain glue up? That's my favorite glue up. And yes, I actually did uh, before I ever saw that comment. It's a little bowl, which I like a lot. I like it a lot better than the lidded container. You know, you always learn something and just improve along the way. Deb, G1. I like the shape and the woods. I love mahogany, so I'm pleased you use that too. I just kind of use whatever I had around. And as I was past, as I was packing up my shop, I was uh, uh, searching for wood to use. So anyway, that was a little bit difficult. Louis Powell, Sam, nice box and great video. Triggered a question. You have an end grain face grain joint on both the top and the bottom between the box elder and the paduke. End grain joints are notoriously weak. Is that a concern? You know, I never even thought about it. I went back and I looked at that lidded box and he was right. Part of it was end grain, part of it was cross grain. I think in something like this, a little, a little uh, project, it's not a big deal. I don't think if it was in, under any kind of stress or pressure, it might be, but uh, I think it'll be fine. Um, Glenn Crandall writes, <laughs> nice box, Sam. What do you use to darken the middle ring? Thank you for sharing. Um, all I used on that middle ring was just a marker. One of my uh, Castor Fable, Faber Castell uh, markers. Um, and I just didn't like the combination and I, and I darkened that. Um, Old Ohio Angler. I'm an old Ohio Angler too, but it's been a while since I've uh, fished in the Buckeye State. It has been a few years since I watched his demo at Hartville Tool, but I believe Ernie Conover called that tool with a lip 
on the end and elbow. Uh, I'm not really sure which one he's talking about, but he kind of mentioned uh, Hartville Tool and also Ernie Conover. Now, I was very fortunate to meet Ernie Conover oh, probably four years ago, five years ago maybe, up in northern Ohio. Um, it was at a lumberyard, and they had demonstrations, and uh, it was really cool. Rex writes, at 5.05 in the video, you're using a small gouge, and it has a number 45 on it. Well, that's the degree that I uh, sharpen the nose angle, is 45 degrees, so that's what the 45 is. Um, John O'Brien asks, Sam, why are you wearing a watch while turning? Well, I use it to tell time. I'm sorry, I had... <laughs> I had to throw in the smart ass answer. I think, uh, you know, I gotta take these seriously. And I think it's a good idea to question, you know, you're wearing a ring. And this is my wedding band. I can't wear it on the other hand because it doesn't work very well. But probably 12, 15 years ago, when I had all my fingers, I had an accident with my original wedding band. And a piece of wood rolled off the lathe and just smashed that. And I had to use a pair of wire cutters and <laughs> I just cut it off. So this is a new one. Um, I would never wear a ring while I'm turning. I don't think wearing a watch is all that dangerous. You know, if you get something caught in there, it's just going to break the band. And I think it would be very difficult to actually catch that band in a spinning piece of wood. But anyway, um, you're right. Uh, maybe I shouldn't be wearing a watch. Um, now, I made a video on a router table, and I'm not sure I've got a link here to that video on making the router table. I'm not sure why I have that in my notes, but there must be a reason. Oh. Uh, Billy asks, where did you get the router plate? How do you adjust the height of your router? Now, if you go back and look at the video on the router table I made a month or so ago. Um, I got all that material, I got the plate and I got the little leveling devices that go underneath the table from Woodhaven. And I'll put a link to the, um, the Woodhaven site. And I get a lot of stuff from there. The, uh, the miter slot I used in that uh, router table I got from Woodhaven. And also, if you've ever seen my uh, bandsaw, Table. I've also got one of those uh, miter slots in that that I use. And they're they're really handy. Oh, Tom from Montana. Welcome to Montana. We are pleased to have you, member of the Great Falls Wood Turners. Now I'm going to be in Great Falls, Montana, like the first week in September, and I'm looking forward to that because now I'm going to be in. Billings, and it'll be a much shorter drive. I think it's maybe three hours up to Great Falls. Um, Martin asks, I do have a shaper already. Should I add a router table? Um, my response to that is, a shaper is, to me, more for cabinet doors and that sort of thing. And a lot of uh, cabinet makers will have one or two shapers to make all those... Uh, you know, rail and style joints, those cope joints that you need for cabinet doors. Um, I think you get by with the router table, you know, and Grizzly is a really good source for nice, large, um, they're almost like shaper bits. They're router bits, but they're, they're really awesome. And I've got uh, a number of those, but you got to use them in a router table. They're too big to do with a handheld router. Glenn Campbell, <laughs> I keep wanting to say Glenn Campbell. Hello, I'm Glenn Campbell. Okay, cut that off. Okay, good basic router table, Sam. I would have made slots at both ends um, so the fence is parallel with the router track. You know, I looked at that, and I'm not sure if I would ever use the, the miter gauge in the slot in combination with with the fence. I'm not sure if that's necessary. And they would have to be absolutely parallel. On the one end of my router table, I just have a, uh, a hole drilled through there with a nut and a bolt, and it just pivots on that. So it doesn't always end up 
parallel with that, uh, that miter gauge. And he also made a comment about, uh, I would soon appreciate the need for a dust collection port on the fence. Well, possibly down the road. Good tip about waxing the fence. Your idea of a couple coats of poly is excellent. I'm not sure if that's what I wrote back to him, but anyway, somebody said that. Anyway, he makes a couple more comments here. What I really like is your method of attaching your work. What I really like is your method of attaching the router table to your workbench. All right, and that is it, I believe. There we go. June something 2019. Notes from the Wyoming Wood Turner. And I've got two videos backed up that I'm gonna publish. Now I'm gonna try to get this out pretty close to the, the time we leave. So it kind of makes sense, but there may be a couple afterward that I obviously did two weeks ago or three weeks ago when I still had stuff in my shop. So they'll be a little bit out of sequence. Anyway, thank you so much for your support. I've gotten uh, so many kind wishes on the move and uh, well, anyway, it's exciting and scary and we'll see what happens. I love Montana. Uh, I went to college in Montana a couple different times. I lived there. Uh, it's a great town. It's kind of a small town city. It's not real big. I don't know, 100,000 people or something. I got a lot of friends up there at the uh, Yellowstone Wood Turning Club that I'm looking forward to attending their symposium. And uh, Alan Jensen is going to be there. Oh my Lord. You know, Alan Jensen is just a top-notch demonstrator and turner, and I'm really looking forward to that. So anyway, I will talk to you next time, and uh, the next time I talk to you, I'll be in Montana. What do you think? Oh, look at this. I guess she's waiting for something here. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. I'll talk to you next time.